the new Red Green Show. If you love the great outdoors, if you love the beautiful wilderness, then watch it on TV with your host, my uncle Red Green. Appreciate it. A bit of excitement up in the lodge this week. Buster Hadfield's car has been stolen. Well, Uncle Red, I think the correct term is repossessed. <laughs> no, no, Harold, this is an actual theft here. Buster reported to the cops and everything. <laughs> no, I, I bet you it's just like, you know, not criminal purposes guy wanted it. Maybe it's just a bunch of kids going on a joyride. 79 Pacer? I don't think so. <laughs> Show, I'm going to show you how to burglar proof your car. Harold's going to do a little wood carving. Away you go there, young fella. Then Dalton's going to try to get me to say the word art, which is a stretch. And I'm going to show you how to work on your lawnmower and feel real good about it. Well, the police have issued a bulletin for Buster's stolen car. Luckily, anyone driving a pacer is going to attract a certain amount of suspicion. You know? <laughs> but I'll tell you, no car is safe these days. You know, Uncle Red, they developed this anti-theft device on cars that you guys might be interested in. It's called a door lock. <laughs> it's on the door. <laughs> door locks are a waste of time, Harold. I'm telling you right now, what happens is you lock up your car, now you gotta go find a coat hanger to get the keys out of her. <laughs> and the next time you lock her up, you gotta find another coat hanger because you locked the first one in right beside the keys. <laughs> Eventually, you gotta buy burglar tools to break into your own car. And somewhere down the road, you lock the burglar tools in the trunk. You see why the system doesn't work, Harold? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. My fault. Totally. I was assuming a certain level of intellect and attention to detail. I was way off base. Lost my head. This week, Bill's going to show us some tricks with his bike. Doesn't like that one too much. What else you got there, Bill? So far, you're just kind of irritating me. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Come on out, Bill. Uh, Do that one again, would you? Uh, <laughs> okay, this is for the big one. Today's grand prize is a buy one, get one free gift certificate from Harvey Dugan's House of Doorknobs. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Dog, you have 30 seconds to try and get my uncle to say this word. <laughs> 30 seconds and go. An oil painting. Two coats with a primer. <laughs> Something you, you buy at an auction. Broken stove. F fancy auction. A working stove. <laughs> Say you, you're, you're looking at pictures of, of a horse and an angel and nudes. What are you looking at? Customized van. <laughs> something, something collectible, something more valuable, something... Oh, oh, oh hubcaps. Oh. <laughs> you would hang this on a wall. Hang it on a wall. Stuffed bass. <laughs> They're nice. Go, They're you, yeah, you go to a public gallery, yeah. and, and, and they hang these on the walls, and people enjoy looking at it. They hang up. Moon. Oh. <laughs> they hang them in galleries or sculptures, paintings. These oh, are... Oh, they're weird. And the abstract stuff. Wait, what is that? Are you... No, you're almost yeah, there. Okay, okay, okay. oh, hey, the King Kerman guy. The, yeah. His first name. King Kerman guy's first name. Billy? No, no, no. His brother. The drunk. The drunk. Oh, they're both juicers. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> the right mechanic. The, the one that stole. The one that stole. Oh, Art. Yes! When life has given you a taste of rejection, getting a dog is an excellent suggestion. It'll be your buddy, your servant, your friend. He'll be there when you're at the end. Makes you feel better when you're out of dough. When you've done all you can with the little you know. Cause no matter how far down life's ladder you go, your dog will always be one rung below. <laughs> you know, with all the cars getting stolen up the lodge, thought I'd take this week's handyman corner and show you how you can make your car burglar proof. Now, you're probably thinking the best way to do that is to have a car that's not worth stealing. I'll tell you something, that doesn't always work, because to a burglar, fourth class riding is better than first class walking. So I think you're better off to go with a multi stage anti theft program. And the first stage of that is the door handle itself, all right? You want to make that unfriendly. You know what I suggest? You wire her up, like I have here, to the cigarette lighter. Now you plug that in, and within a couple of minutes, that door handle gets blazing hot. Okay? This not only makes the burger upset, 
It enables the cops to catch them red-handed. <laughs> okay, next thing you want to do for the next stage is uh, you want to disable your steering wheel somehow. So what you do is get yourself a crutch. You can pick one of these up for free at the waiting room at the gout clinic when nobody's watching. Right? You just got to hook this up the steering wheel. Here, I'll show you how. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you want to mount the crutch in there so it comes right down between the driver's legs. That way, when the burger does a quick left-hand turn, you'll have to pull over for medical attention. <laughs> and here's another little feature. I've run my rad hose up inside the car, got the rad cap on there, but when I leave the car, I take the cap with me. That way, when the burglar starts to up, steam goes all over him. Instant sauna. <laughs> all right. All right, now, we got another feature to show you here in a minute. Okay. You know, you want to figure out some way to impede the rotation of the tires. Now, I, I would think about maybe letting the air out of all of them, but you know, that's inconvenient. So instead, I say what you do is take a nut off each wheel on one side, but not just any nut. Make sure it's the two nuts that are closest together. So in other words, the farthest one back on the front wheel and the farthest one forward on the back wheel. Here, I'll show you. That was my back. <laughs> There we go. Now, you're going to need a piece of chain for this, which you can pork off the back of a tow truck while the guy's in the donut shop working on his waistline. Now, you can see how I've mounted these uh, to the nuts that are closest to each other and so on. That way, when the burglar tries to move the car, the wheels are going to lock up. All right, let's go to stage five, anchors. See how this works here? Jam these anchors well into the ground here. We've attached one to the back bumper and one to the front bumper. <laughs> All right, now we're ready for the final stage, noise creation. More or less especially for lodge members. <laughs> now, for this, you're going to need some of this special wire they use to ring the bell at gas stations. But you don't have to buy this stuff. I mean, most of the stations leave it out all night. So all you got to do is cruise by with a pair of wire cutters, let nature take its course. <laughs> all right, you want to strip off the one end of the wires. You want to connect these to your horn relay. But make sure you connect the right wires to the right terminals. <laughs> nope. Oh, gosh, that's not even the horn relay. Here we go. <laughs> Boy, that is loud, isn't it? Great acoustics under there. Anybody say anything? No? OK. <laughs> then you spread that hose out where the burger will be sure to step on it. And there you have your anti-theft car. Isn't that great? So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, boy, I was supposed to pick Bernice up about an hour ago. <laughs> oh. 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 No. tuned for Harold's Handicrafts, and you thought you were useless. Well, until today, I thought irony was just a description of how our tap water tastes. <laughs> Buster Hatfield had me convinced to get an alarm system installed in the van. He knows a guy, gets a real good price. I think they might be hot. <laughs> hot? Stolen car alarms? <laughs> you, want, you, you want a car alarm that can be stolen? <laughs> Well, the price was right, Harold. Doesn't matter anyway. Too late now. Before I can get the thing installed, somebody stole the van. You stole a possum van? Yeah. <laughs> Why? You know what the effect of a five-bean chili is on you. <laughs> we all do. And she certainly does. And she warned you at the company picnic that maybe it'd be a good idea to stay away from that chili. But you had to say, no, relax, would you? It won't hurt to try a little. And maybe a little would have been OK. But you had to have the three bowls. <laughs> now we have a problem. Mm. If you had any more gas in you, you'd be floating around the ceiling with a string tied to your toe. <laughs> And she gets to say, I told you so, or at least she will once the trouble starts. 
So, don't take the offensive, take the defensive. Go out, buy yourself a dog, stand right next to him, he'll cover for you. If things get real bad, you might have to bring in a pack of strays for a couple of weeks. Yep, yeah, or we find a trip to the zoo is yep, good cover. The zoo, the zoo, yeah. And uh, recent research has proven that the bigger and uglier the animal, the more you can actually get away with. <laughs> This is very good advice. We know what we're talking about. You know, we're, this is good stuff. You hang on to this. We know the score. Yeah. We know which way the winds blow. <laughs> uh, attention, handymen. This is a finishing nail. This is a concrete nail. This is a thumbnail. Don't ever confuse them. <laughs> Welcome to Harold Green's Handicrafts, where crafty hands make handicrafts. <laughs> Today, today I'm going to be making a decorative decoy. Oh. Now, step one, as always, is the first thing you do. So, I suggest that you get a piece of wood that's much larger than the actual decoy that you want to make. Here, this is step one. Next week, I'll show you how to make a much stronger workbench. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's get carving. In order to do that, we need a pocket knife. Now, the po pocket knife is a, uh, it's a knife. And, uh, which I, I, I knew where it was because I used a pocket knife as the instrument of, of uh, there, we'll see, there you are. <laughs> Hence the term pocket knife. <laughs> What you do is you, once you get this open, the, the blade will determine the, uh, the, the, the stroke that you, the blade would come out, and then that's when you'd, you'd really get at it when the blade's out, boy. It's, that's, when you, that's when the whittling begins, I'll tell you. Then the... <laughs> that's, that didn't come. Uncle Red! <laughs> Excellent. You have to determine, is it sharp? Oh, if trees could cry. All right. Now, always remember, always remember, this is the important thing, cut with the grain. So tough was it? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna paint it. We're gonna, to paint it, we're gonna we're gonna make it more, even more look like a duck. So you got I'm gonna use this this orange here. We're gonna use orange, and then you're just gonna paint it. And you continue to paint it in a duck-like fashion. A beautiful decoy duck, and you made it yourself. That's the best part. <laughs> Can't you just hear it quack? We sure can. <laughs> well, the possum van is still missing, but the cops found Buster's pacer down in the ravine. <laughs> Inside, totally got it on her. I mean, just torn to shreds. The cops figured it was just, uh, you know, senseless vandalism, but Buster said, no, it was like that before. <laughs> you, know, you know, Harold, he really should get his dog's toenails clipped. Yeah. Or at least get that mutt to stop line dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so no word on the possum van, huh? No. Well, I guess you're just gonna have to go out and get yourself a new one. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want a new van, Harold. I, I want my old van. I love that van. It's a great van. Yeah, but new vans are great, too. And they don't smell like a wet goat. <laughs> no, Harold, my van is a classic. Made vans better back in those days. You know, the old-fashioned workmanship. You know, the kind of craft people took pride in their work in that time. 1985. The golden age of automobiles, was it? <laughs> well, yeah, and besides, today, all they got is those minivans. Men are not comfortable with anything that's got the word mini in it. Well, how about mini skirts? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, to my generation, those are for women, Harold. <laughs> mini skirt, mini van, mini mouse, there's not an ounce of testosterone in the bunch. <laughs> Well, in honor of me losing my van, Bill brought over a unicycle between Nas too hard. Can't be. What are you doing? 
Bill seems to store everything that he doesn't use in his pants. <laughs> it's amazing how do you do that? What's this? Oh, he's got something else in there. Oh, my gosh, what is that? Some medical piece of equipment of some kind? What is it? <laughs> oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, that must be some kind of special material he's got. It's anyway, it's, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right, I get the idea, Bill. Bicycle built for two, half the pedaling, you know. The only thing I don't like is how <laughs> Bill's got the brakes and the steering. Anyway, all I gotta do is do, okay, away we go, let's go. The thing, yeah, that's the horn, right? The thing is, what I didn't realize is that, the, you know, if you don't, if we got kind of off on the bill, we're pedaling back. Bill, so we got off on the wrong bill. We're off on the bill. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Hi, golly, now. At least I'm, oh, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out. Fine. Now I'm starting to think, what the heck can I do? I don't seem to have any control over anything, especially Bill. And I realize that I've got a back pedal brake on there. I can just, whoa, oh, 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 boy, up she comes, up she comes. Oh, down she goes. And look at this. Bill's got the balance from his unicycle days. I guess, look at that. Look at that. Look at that show off. Boy, that's an odd thing. You pray for a low bridge, don't you? <laughs> oh, there's a rock there, Bill. Look out. Look out. Be careful. You all right, Bill? Honk if you love fun. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> Stay tuned. Harold has good news. Oh, man. Well, went down to look at some of them new vans, you know? A couple of those babies are pretty sharp. Actually, they loaned me one to use for a day to try it out a little bit. Yeah, I saw it. It really does look sharp. Yeah, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. It's, a, it's not very big, though, is it? Oh, it's big enough, Harold. Seven passenger. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but I mean, from the outside, it's yeah. not very big. It's, it's almost like uh, a minivan. <laughs> No, when you first saw it, you know, they'd think it's a minivan. No. When they saw it, they'd almost assume that you were thinking of purchasing a minivan. <laughs> yeah, and I distinctly remember you saying that minivans are for women, you know. <laughs> Is it a minivan? <laughs> Well, technically, yes. I guess it is technically oh. a minivan, yeah. But then, Harold, technically, you're a human being, so obviously there's a lot of leeway with technical <laughs> All right, get balanced. Keep your head down. Slowly on the backswing. Keep the left arm straight. Stop when you get to the very top, and then accelerate as you come through and make contact. Welcome to the experts portion of the show. And, and this week's experts, of course, is my uncle Red and his good friend, Mr. Winston Rothschild. Okay. First letter goes as follows. Dear experts, my son, my son has decided he doesn't want to follow in my footsteps. I want him to join the family business, but he has other ideas. What can I do? Aww. Well, you know, I guess you just have to start living with the fact your son has his own life. <laughs> well, that's no kind of advice, Harold. Here's the man paying a tremendous compliment to his son, you know, inviting him into the family business. I'll tell you what this is. This is a show of fatherly love we're looking at right here. Am I right there, Winston? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, of all the times I wish my old man, you know, had brought me into his family business, eh? Instead of, you know, getting me to bring him ashtrays and bottle openers and... Going to answer the front door and telling the cops that he wasn't there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, if my son ever asked me, you know, to be in the family business, I'd be so delighted I'd do anything I could to get him in there. You know, I would sort of make fun of everything else he tried to do, and uh, I'd cut him out of the will, and I'd, I'd threaten him and slash all his tires if he didn't come into the business. You know, just a, in a friendly way. You know, make him toe the line. Well, I completely disagree. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, if, if, you're ask, if you ask me, I would disagree. I think he, the, the son should lead his own life like Mr. Rothschild does. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, you know, I, I, I've got no regrets, eh? You know, I mean, sure, I floundered around there for a while, had my share of failures. You know, I, at one point there, I wanted to be a bank president and then a Supreme Court judge. And then I just sort of dove headlong into the sewage business and I've been up to my eyebrows ever since, eh? Yeah. <laughs> But I gotta admit, it was a little bit disappointing that uh, the old man never asked me. Because I'll tell you something, if I had a kid, he'd be more than welcome to join me in my family business. Oh, he yeah. might not be interested in starting at the bottom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, I think the point here is that uh, some sons just, uh, you know, <clears throat> don't measure up to their fathers. Well, sometimes the son is five times the man his father is. Yeah, yours will be. <laughs> Yeah.
Carl? All right, uh, he's not here, but uh, kind of made up my mind. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead with this uh, new van, you know? The, something about the smell of a, of a new vehicle there, you know, and uh, boy, the controls are something else in this thing. This thing's got more adjustments on the windshield wiper control than the possum van had on the whole dashboard. <laughs> Even just to have the carpeting all the one color, you know? <laughs> now, it's a crime, you know, that the possum van was stolen. But life goes on, that's what I say. So I'm just going to kind of duck out early here, get down to the dealership, and I think I'm... Uncle Uncle Red, 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 Uncle